Hey guys, welcome back to another video. And today we're going to be solving the lead code question x to the power of n. So first let's go over how we can actually solve the question using recursion and then let's implement it using Python code. Okay, so in the beginning we're given two variables x and n and we need to output the value of x to the power of n. Now in other words, let's say x is equal to 2 and n is equal to 4. That's nothing else but writing 2 to the power of 4, which is 2 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 2 again. So now let's say we have n which is equal to 0. Now in that case, what the value of x is doesn't actually matter. So x to the power of 0, anything to the power of 0, is always going to be equal to 1. So that's going to be our first condition. If n is equal to 0, we're just going to return 1. The other case we need to think about is when n is greater than 0. So for example, let's say we have 2 to the power of 4. This is nothing else but writing 2 multiplied by 2 to the power of 4 minus 1, which is nothing but 2 to the power, 2 multiplied by 2 to the power of 3. Now we're going to use this in order to solve when n is greater than 0. So in other words, x to the power of n, so we're going to solve that by calling x multiplied by, we're going to call the power function on x comma n minus 1. So how is this actually going to work? So let's say we have an n value of 5. So we're going to start off with x to the power of 5. Then we're going to call x to the power of 4, then x to the power of 3, x to the power of 2, x to the power of 1. And finally, and once we reach x to the power of 0, we're going to end up returning 1, like we defined over here. So in this case, we're going to return 1, and we're going to stop making any more recursion call, recursive calls. And that's going to be the end. So we could do this, we could use this method over here for everything where n is greater than 0. But there is a better and more optimized method which we can use. So we already have this as it is. But for when, if n is greater than 0, we can split it into two parts. So we have one case where n is even. And the other case is when n is odd. So when n is odd, we're going to use the same thing we did before. So that's just going to be x multiplied by calling the power function on x comma n minus 1. But when n is even, we can use a simpler and smarter method. And let, let me just show you what this is. So let's say we have x to the power of n. That is the same as calling, and remember n is even, that is the same as calling x to the power of n by 2 multiplied by x to the power of n by 2. In other words, 2 to the power of 4 is the same as calling 2 to the power of 2 multiplied by 2 to the power of 2. You get the same answer regardless. So how are we going to call this? So for in this case, what we're going to do is x to the power of n is going to equal to so we're going to have a temporary variable, so let's just call that variable temp. And this variable is going to store the value of, so we're going to call the power function on x comma n by 2. And our answer to this is just going to be the temporary variable squared, so temp multiplied by temp. So this is a faster way, and we're going to make lesser recursive calls in the case that n is even. But if n is odd, we're just going to continue using this uh, function over here. Now we have one last and final case, which is for when n is less than 0. So in the case when n is less than 0, all we can, a simple thing we can do is we can change x to 1 by x. And then we're going to change n and we're going to make that positive. So we're going to take a po negative value and make it positive by multiplying it by negative 1. So negative 1 multiplied by n. So what do I mean by that? So let's say you have x to the power of negative 3. 
and that's just nothing else but calling 1 by x to the power of 3. And so that's all we're going to do. We're going to change x to 1 by x, and we're going to make n positive by multiplying it by negative 1. And then we're just going to call the same other functions for if n is even or for if n is odd. Okay, so now all that we have left to do is implement it using Python code. So let's see how that looks like. Our first step is going to be to check if n is equal to 0. And in that case, we're just going to return a value of 1. Else if our n is less than 0, then we're going to call this function. So return self dot my pal. And what are we going to call it on? We're not going to call it on x. Instead, we're going to call it on 1 by x. And we need to convert the negative value of n to a positive one. So we're just going to make that negative n. Now we need to see, now in the other two cases, our n value is not 0, but it's greater than 0. So in this case, we're first going to check if n is even. So to do that, if n mod 2 is equal to 0, then in that case, we know it's even. So we can return. So we're going to call the function self.mypal and we're going to call it on x comma n by 2. And what we can do is we can just multiply this like this. But now the problem with this is we're calling the function two times. That is just a waste of time. So instead, what we're going to do is we're going to store this value inside of a temporary variable. And then we're just going to multiply the temporary variable by itself. So this way, we're only calling the function one time. Now, in the other case, so where n, so or we can just call else. And one more thing, this is supposed to be else if, so l if. Okay, and else, so in this case, our n value is odd. And over here, what we're going to do is we're going to return n, sorry, x multiplied by, so now we're going to call the function self dot my power on x comma n minus 1. All right, so now let's submit our solution and see what we get. Okay, so our results did get accepted. And finally, do let me know if you have a better solution to solve this. And thanks for watching. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you.